Hello again, everyone. I told you in my previous video it was raining and it had got cold again. Well, guess what? It's still raining and it got colder. I am freezing my butt off. I'd put all my winter clothes up. I just happened to find this hat stuck in my socks in the camper. So I'm wearing it and I don't have any blankets. I cleaned them all and I put them all in plastic bags so they'll, they'd stay clean till next winter. I got long sleeve shirt and normally this thing keeps me very warm, but not right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll survive all right. I'm gonna read the third chapter of Jeremiah. And in this chapter, <clears throat> God is Woo. God is pouring it out on Israel for their harlotry. He even calls them a whore. God will take the whores back if they truly repent and if they truly turn away from their harlotry. God loves Israel. God loves his people. He does not like sin and he wants us to repent of it and turn away from it. And if we don't, his wrath will be poured out on us. In the third chapter of Jeremiah, that's what he was warning Israel about. And guess what? They love their harlotry more than they love God. And guess what else? In the end, 862, I think, B.C., he did pour his wrath out on them. And you know what's about to happen to them again? Because they're still wallowing in their harlotry, but he did let them go back to their harlotry land. He really loves the country, the people of Israel. He really wants them to accept him as their Lord and Savior. But they're still enjoying their harlotry with others. Okay, I'll hush my commentary. I just wanted to kind of explain what this was talking about in the third chapter. They say, if a man, and this is God speaking to Jeremiah to tell Israel, and God did, uh, Jeremiah did tell Israel, didn't do a lot of good. You know, it's like talking to that red wall right there. They say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted, but thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lean with. In the ways hast thou sat for them, as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted thy land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain. That means no rain in the spring when they needed it for plants too. And thou hadst a whore's forehead, thou refusest, to be ashamed. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me, My father, thou art the guide of my youth? Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, 
Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She is gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said, after she had done all these things, Turn thou unto me, but she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw, when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass through the likeness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet for all of this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but fain, feignedly said, saith the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep my anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed rest against the Lord God and has scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree and ye have not obeyed my voice saith the Lord turn O backsliding children saith the Lord for I am married unto you and I will take you one of a city and two of a family and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass when you be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord. They shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind. Neither shall they remember it neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagina imagination of their evil heart, in those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. But I said, How shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the host of nations? And I said, Thou shalt call me my father and shalt not turn away from me. Surely, as, I, as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for 
from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. For shame hath devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. We lie down in our shame, and our confusion covereth us. For we have sinned against the Lord our God. We and our fathers, from our youth, even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. Bam. Friends, God hates sin with a passion. God desires his people to be true to him, to be faithful to him, and to sin not. If you don't believe me when I say God hates sin, look at what he did to his only begotten son upon the cross at Calvary. God hates sin. I pray. I pray, I pray, I pray that you repent of any sin you have, that you turn away from that sin, and that you make God first over everything and over everyone. Do not play the part of the harlot. Do not whore yourself to things and people and idols and lusts after every kind. As I read in the book of Matthew today, just go watch that video, the one I did earlier today, about possessions and about stuff that draws you away from God. Don't let that happen in your life. And if it is happening in your life like it did in mine, for 51 years. Stop it now. Make God number one in your life. Get rid of all of that stuff which will do you no good at all the first second after you have breathed your last breath. It's that time, the time right after you breathe your last breath on earth that you better be thinking about and stop all the foolishness on planet Earth. Because you're here but for a vapor in the scheme of the overall. The overall is an eternity that has no end. Spend it in heaven with God who created you, who loves you, but he wants you faithful to him.